Hello, I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and you are watching SciTech. Nations have a big goal ahead, ensuring that the global average temperature does not rise by 2 degrees Celsius by 2100. This gargantuan task means that governments need to phase out fossil fuel powered vehicles quickly. Electric vehicles are an attractive alternative to fossil fuels. Powering electric vehicles are either batteries or hydrogen fuel cells. There is an intense debate between the two technologies. So, who is winning it? Let's find out. Electricity from renewable energy sources like solar or wind could help build a low carbon world. Electric vehicles rely on either batteries or hydrogen fuel cells to function. Today we'll compare battery electric vehicles or BEV and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles or FCEVs in terms of efficiency and their impact on the environment. The most common batteries used in electric cars are lithium ion batteries which also power our laptops and mobile phones. Hydrogen fuel cells, on the other hand, use hydrogen to generate electricity. Last week we told you that hydrogen does not occur freely in nature and that it needs to be produced. Grey hydrogen is made using fossil fuels and green hydrogen from renewable sources of electricity. We also told you that India is trying to establish itself in the green hydrogen sector. So how can we use green hydrogen in vehicles fitted with hydrogen fuel cells? Hydrogen fuel cells contain a positive electrode or anode and a negative electrode or cathode. Hydrogen is fed to the anode and oxygen to the cathode. A catalyst present in the cathode separates hydrogen's negatively charged electrons from the positively charged protons. The electrons move to the cathode through an external circuit generating electricity. The protons pass through a membrane before reaching the cathode. Once the electrons and protons reach the cathode, they combine with oxygen to form water and heat. According to the Canadian Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association, hydrogen fuel cell electric cars have a carbon footprint of 2.7 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer compared to batteries 20.9 grams. Hydrogen cars from Toyota, Honda and Hyundai are already on the market. However, BEVs have the upper hand in terms of popularity. Tesla, Tata, Nexon, Hyundai are some of the famous players in the market. Over 8,500 hydrogen fuel cell vehicles were sold in 2020. As for BEVs, the figure was 3.1 million. Hydrogen fuel cells electric vehicles have an inefficiency problem, which means a lot of energy is lost at different stages. First, when hydrogen is produced, then its transportation and storage, and finally when the stored hydrogen is converted into electricity inside the fuel cells. The overall efficiency for batteries is 76% compared to 23% of hydrogen fuel cells. Some of the other limitations of FCEVs are that hydrogen is flammable and expensive to produce. But hydrogen cars do not need recharging unlike their BEV counterparts. And BEVs are not without their shortcomings. The batteries contain lithium, cobalt and other metals which need to be mined. Mining of lithium has shot up by over 58% in the last decade. Extracting metals could deplete water reserves and impact sensitive ecosystems. Perhaps we should stop pitting batteries against hydrogen fuel cells. Both seem to have some role to play. While batteries could power small vehicles, Hydrogen seems better equipped to support trucks and airplanes that undertake long-distance travel. It is difficult to imagine life without satellites. They keep us connected. They help us forecast weather. They allow us to navigate. Thank you, GPS. They also provide military intelligence to the governments. Now, satellites could help scientists keep tabs on microplastics, which are particles measuring less than 5 millimeters long. So why do scientists want to track microplastics? And what can these objects orbiting Earth tell us about tiny particles aggregating in the oceans? Let us find out. There's no escaping plastics. 
they are everywhere in the air in our waters and in our food about 8 million tons of plastics get dumped into our oceans and yet only a few are detected where are the rest plastics get broken down into tiny particles that measure the size of sesame seeds called microplastics due to waves and winds microplastics could make life difficult for marine life they enter the food chain when plankton and fish larvae eat microplastics these synthetic materials are linked to cancer and other health issues but this connection is yet to be proven microplastics often gather in these places of the ocean but scientists don't have a complete grasp on how these materials distribute over space and time however scientists from the university of michigan have made an encouraging start they think satellites could help scientists spy over microplastics in the sea so they used eight satellites which are a part of nasa's cyclone global navigation satellite system or cygnss was built to measure wind speeds above earth's oceans which could inform experts about the strength of cyclones cygnss contains radar a detection system that uses radio waves to measure parameters for instance it can calculate ocean roughness which changes with respect to wind speed and debris floating in the water according to nasa microplastics cause oceans to respond less to wind speeds in other words they don't seem to roughen up despite wind speeds therefore smoother waters could indicate that microplastics are present they identified ocean surfaces that were smooth despite the wind speeds and then they compared these areas to observations and models that predict where microplastics are likely to gather in the oceans one limitation is that scientists couldn't sample these waters to confirm if microplastics are present in those areas further they hope to strengthen their measurements in the coming days And that is all for this episode of SciTech. You can send us your valuable feedback on the email ID flashing on your screen. Also, download India Science app or visit our website www.indiascience.in for more such videos. And don't forget to follow us on our social media handles as well. And before signing off, here is fact of the day for you. Thanks for watching. Fact of the day: John B. Good enough. M Stanley Whittingham and Yakira Yoshino won a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2019 for their contributions to the development of the lithium ion battery a lightweight and rechargeable form of a battery